So I actually had a really good question come in over email the other day and this is all about sarcomeres and how muscle contraction actually happens. Now if you've been using your manual to understand exactly what's going on it can be a little bit confusing. Things don't necessarily come to life in a manual and it's hard to kind of get a little bit of perspective of actually what's going on, actually what happens in relation to this whole sliding filament theory. Now. Uh, the sliding filament theory can sound really complicated, so I'm going to real simplify it as quickly as I can as well, so that it's just about giving you perspective and understanding it the best as possible. So we know the sliding filament theory is basically what's going on when our muscles contract. So whenever your muscle contracts, that's your sliding filament theory. Now, what happens is you have a sarcomere. Now, see on this lovely little post-it note, this actual post-it note is a sarcomere. <laughs> that's what I want you to think about. So the fat bit through the middle, which actually looks a little bit like a caterpillar, so apologies about the drawing, um, is a myosin. So that's a contractile protein called myosin. It's a little bit fatter than the other contractile protein. It's got little golf club heads on it. Um, and on that golf club head sits, uh, sits ATP. So this is your adenosine triphosphate. And that's the chemical that's going to allow us to have muscle contraction. So before we get into that, the thin bit around the outside is actin. That's the other protein, um, contractile protein that we have in a sarcomere. Now these two myofilaments together make a sarcomere. And when they're told to contract, which we'll go into how that happens in a moment, when they're told to contract, that's when the, the myosin heads pull the actin towards itself and it concertinas up. So it literally closes upon itself. So let's go through actually what's involved in that. This is the lovely sarcomere that you were looking at a moment ago. Now it doesn't sit on its own. It can't sit just on its own. It has to sit alongside other sarcomeres. So here's one I prepared earlier. True blue Peter format. Um, so the sarcomeres line up end on end. So one sarcomere here, they build up end on end on end on end. And together, that whole string of post-it notes in this case is a muscle fibre. So when our nerves connect into this, so let's just say this pen is a nerve, it connects into the muscle fibre itself. And as it's connecting into that muscle fibre, this nerve sends off a signal and it goes, contract now please. Now it can't just contract one muscle, uh, one sarcomere, it's got to contract all of that muscle fibre. So what happens is that these close up, kind of like concertina up, so let's just fold these in for a moment. They concertina up this way, um, whereby the myosin literally pulls in the actin from either side, like a, um, an accordion. Music, musical instrument, accordion, literally folds up so the mass doesn't change of it but it just condenses in its length. So that's hard for me to do, left handed. <laughs> and then pull this right in. Fantastic. So now what we did have was one long muscle fibre and now it's condensed right up into a shorter contraction. So there, the post-it note still exists, it's still one post-it note, but all of these have literally condensed within themselves. So then you end up with a shorter muscle fibre. Now that's it in a concentric contraction, because the muscle fibre is shortened. Now if we were doing an eccentric contraction, we start elongating all of these back out. So that's when they start to stretch back out, and we start heading back towards... Um, a full length muscle fibre. Um, so then you end up back to your full length muscle fibre and that's all under control by the nervous system and it's this motor nerve that says yes contract it or yes relax it. So this pen, <laughs> this motor nerve is in control of that. Now we don't just have one muscle fibre, we ha also have I could do with another set of post-it notes all the way across. We have loads of different muscle fibres all lining up all of your muscle fibres together join up to call something that's called a fascicle and that's got a uh, connective tissue all the way around it and then they all join up, lots and lots of fascicles join up to then create the whole muscle belly. So we don't just have one of these muscle fibres in our body, we actually have lots of them. Now when we're training what happens is we're tearing these fibres, we're tearing these muscle fibres. So if we get, and then as they rebuild 
our hypertrophy is we're regaining a little bit of extra protein that's being layered down which gives you an extra size so it ends up looking bigger now that only might be like by a tenth of a millimeter it's going to be tiny on each muscle fiber absolutely negligible even via a microscope but that builds up within all of those muscle fibers until you end up with what we class as a larger muscle so not only have I gone through sliding filament theory in pure post-it format, <laughs> um, I hope it makes a lot more sense in relation to the accordion approach as well. That it's not just one sarcomere that's moving, it's actually a long line of sarcomeres that makes up a muscle fibre. And then it's the contraction from the, the pen, <laughs> the motor neuron, that allows it to condense, to contract right up, that's your concentric contraction, and then it's the motor neuron to relax now, and it relax straight back out into a, a longer muscle fiber. So I hope that helps you understand sarcomeres and the sliding filament theory in a little bit more detail. If you have any questions at all, please do pop them in the little comments box below. It'd be really great to hear them from you. I love getting your questions, especially in relation to A&P and nutrition for your revision. So please do pop them below, and I will get to answering them on some more videos for you. Also, whilst you're here, please do hit like, um, put the little thumbs up, that'd be really great so I know I'm on the right track. And if you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you do it because it'll mean that you get a little notification just to say when all these other great revision videos are online as well. That'll be fab. Up until then, I will see you soon, I'm sure. Take care, guys.